All right, guys, it is a cold and uh, rainy day in the bluegrass. And uh, <laughs> since my clientele are soft as marshmallows, <laughs> of course, they've canceled. Uh, whole morning of work. Oh, Stoney, I can't do this. I got to run the kids here and there. Really? What it is? You just don't want to be cold and wet? Okay, that's fine. We will still put into work. Won't we, Eli? Always. Always. Always going to put into work. And you but might notice that I'm holding my stick. Right? Okay. And what am I going to do with this stick? How's this stick related to dog training? Well, I got a lot of... Uh, the other day I posted a little a little video of me uh, doing a little work with the targeting stick and uh, uh, I got a lot of feedback on that and people were asking me, hey Stoney, you know, why, why don't you make some more videos like that? Well, uh, the reason you don't see very many videos like that, guys, is because like marker training, target stick training, all that stuff, it doesn't really fit in to what we do here at the kennel. You know, uh, I've said this a million times, but my kennel is like a giant Montessori, right? Dogs come here and primarily the learning happens as a result of doing. That's what we're always talking about, learning by doing or adventure training. So I have a big group of mentor dogs that stay here on a regular basis. Then these new dogs come in and the new dogs just kind of, you know, follow the old dogs around and kind of learn the patterns. And then once they start to get settled and we teach them a basic vocabulary, make sure their physical skills are top notch, but it's all done kind of in a, in a big group environment, like group learning. You know, everybody is, is looking to the, to the dog on their left or their right and saying, hey, you know, how, you, how, how, how are you approaching this? And it's really a fun way to go about training dogs and it allows you to do high volume dog training. Uh, when you're, you know, doing clicker training, when you're doing uh, any kind of marker training really, and you're doing target stick training, it's, it's going to be hard to do much in the way of high volume because like, you, you know, if you have 10 dogs out here, like they're going to be hearing the click all the time and it just, it just doesn't work. Okay. But I do, like at random times during my apprenticeship periods, make guys learn how to do marker training. Uh, and the reason is, well, one, it's fun. You know, it's just, it's just a lot of fun to, to try to open up lines of communication and motivation between uh, new dog trainers and, and, and all the different dogs. It's uh, fun to watch the dogs try to figure all this stuff out. And it helps develop a certain kind of timing and, and subtle ability to influence dogs from the new trainer's perspective, okay? So I'm gonna, I'm gonna go through some exercises with these dogs and uh, kinda just show you what this, this, this target stick's about. And then I'm gonna bring my 12-year-old son in here and we're gonna watch him do it and we'll have a good time okay. making So what is the point of this right here? Okay, this right here, it's just a stick. It's a dowel rod, you cut them. So they're about waist high or so, you know. And uh, then you teach a dog to follow this stick with their nose. It's really the same thing that happens when you're teaching a dog to follow your hand. You know how you get you a treat and you put it in your hand, you move it around, the dog follows it around, and then when they follow it into the position that you like, you give them a treat. Okay, that's the same thing with the target stick. Only, uh, kind of there are some benefits to using a target stick. One, you get to stay in your normal posture, you know, and uh, direct the dog. Two, you human beings are tool tool bearing animals. You know, humans love tools of all types, right? And so if you give a person a tool, they start like thinking about the tool and a lot of times it'll kind of cut down on the amount of time they waste talking to the dog. So I like the targeting stick because it helps my apprentices uh, learn to be calm and to be quiet and to be aware of their posture. So I can really just sit there and watch them try to influence the dog. You know, and so what I'm really watching is I'm watching how their timing is developing, right? And I'm walk, watching how they position their body in such a way as to get the dog to move into the uh, activity that we'd like. So I got a little dog over here. Oh, and the other part of the equation is a clicker. Guys, all this is, listen, <laughs> there's a million videos about this stuff online, and I, I, I'm not going to try to try to get into that part of the business too much because uh, that's not what we do here. This is a clicker, okay, and this is the essence of marker training. It's much better than a word or any other sound, right, because, like, uh, when, you, when you click this click, it's a sound that the dog will never hear in real life outside of these training exercises, right? And so, basically, all we're doing is we're teaching the dog that its behavior leads to a click, right, and the click leads to uh, something good happening. That's it, right? So the dog's gonna try to behave, and at the exact moment it's behaving the way I want it to, I'll click this clicker. Then it'll stop and look at me, and I'll give it a treat. Right. See, the reason that has an advantage over just giving the dog a treat is because, like, if the dog's doing something and I go to reach down to give it a treat, right, then, like, by the time I get 
in motion, get the treat delivered to the dog, there's a certain amount of precision and speed lost in my ability to communicate with the dog, right? So that's why we're using the clicker. It just uh, is a, it's a very precise way to convey information. And there are a bunch of people that are way good with the clicker. Uh, so if, the, if you like this, you know, go find those people. All right, so you guys know how we do this. You know, we come out, up, very nice. And uh, we walk this little course. And while we're walking this little course, we introduce our vocabulary, you know. So like right here, I'll tell the dogs easy. And all I'm trying to do right here is tell them that I want them to, you know, not knock into stuff in the environment. I work on balance. Hup, hup is a catch-all term that we use for negotiating obstacles. <clears throat> we work on getting the dogs excited. Come on, come on, come on, come on. So we can practice calming them down easy. Right? That's what we call emotion matching. So that's pretty fun. Right? But see, so how this dog already knows this little pattern here, right? It's easy to come in and add, you know, touching the stick with your nose into the pattern. And like, I've done it the other way. I used to do it for a few years where, like I would use marker training to teach the whole pattern. But that was before I discovered, you know, the true utility of having mentor dogs, you know. And listen, once you get you a good solid group of mentor dogs like I have, then you'll realize that your labor inputs, uh, they go way down and your productive outputs go way up because dogs really learn best by doing. But this is super cool though, a lot of fun. Right, and so I'm just walking this dog around, doing little stuff. Very nice. And whenever you hear that click, she's doing something that I really like to see and I want to see again. Okay, that's cool. Get over here. Now, I'm going to bring my, uh, I'm going to bring my little apprentice in here. Good, and I'm going to let him try it. And we'll see if it's as easy as it looks oh, when I do it. All right, we'll get uh, my little apprentice, George, who happens to also be my boy. Come on over here, George. Now, <clears throat> George runs into a unique problem because uh, George is wrong-handed. You see what I'm saying? And like, so my whole course, everything is set up for a right-handed person because I'm the boss and I'm right-handed, right? Now, so George is wrong-handed. So when you're wrong-handed, what do you do? Well, look, it's tough. Right? It's, it, it, it's tough, but you just have to uh, learn to persevere. And so uh, George is going to maybe have to go backwards or something, I don't know. Uh, but these are the kind of things that make you think and refine your ability to influence your dog. You're going to run up into impediments. You see what I'm saying? Like you guys out there that are wrong-handed, you are going to go out in your yard and you're going to be trying this and like everything's going to be like a mirror image of what I'm doing and it'll be frustrating you know guys I do about 30 online training coaching journals a month every one of those journals is the same thing people get frustrated and when they get frustrated the dog does poorly you know what I mean then I have to cheerlead them a little bit and then they come out of it and they're like oh wow Stoney I can't believe it works so well it's so awesome but every one of them goes through that oh I'm frustrated phase okay so like uh, <clears throat> this is what's gonna happen to George here he's gonna come out and he's gonna be trying to use his stick and it's gonna be real awkward that's why we're gonna do it with a bunch of puppies where I show it and George tries it so you can see guys when you are watching these YouTube videos I'm 47 years old I've been doing this stuff my whole life you're not going to do it just like me right it's just not gonna happen not in the short run but in a in a little while if you make an effort you'll probably do it better than me because you're young and motivated you know and your brains better right so like watch George try this right and then just you know like make make yourself understand that when you do it it's not gonna be perfect all right Georgie let's go so start off with something like a little spin and don't talk to her you see, immediately, what did he start to do? He starts to talk and make noise. And the reason that he starts to talk and make noise is because here at my kennel, right, in everyday, app, keep going, in everyday applications, what happens is, like, uh, we use vocal inflection and posture. We use vocal inflection and posture to uh, get the dogs to do what we want. We have our big mentor group that basically lead the dogs through the exercises, okay? And uh, so, like, like, George knows how to train dogs. Right? I mean, he's been training dogs since he was a little kid. But when it comes to, when it comes to this, right, this is something that we don't do here very regularly. Right? And he might struggle with it a little bit. 
And so when he goes to talking to the dog, right, like right then he just started to talk to the dog and he messed up a little bit because the dog quit like focusing on what it was supposed to do and looked at his face. Right? This is what I'm talking about, guys. This will really help you isolate those channels of communication. It'll help you become much more disciplined in how you do things. Even look how awkward this <laughs> George looks with the stick. <laughs> so when you video yourself <laughs> and uh, like you're out there in your yard thinking, man, I'm fluid. I look just like Stony. Uh, well, wait till you watch that back on your phone to start deciding whether or not you look just like Stony. Very nice. But still working pretty well. And guys, remember this. Like, none of this stuff is particularly important, right? We don't really care, like, whether this dog will follow this stick around. What we care about is whether or not George and this dog develop the appropriate lines of communication and motivation, okay? So as long as you're out and you're having a good time, if you're not the supreme master click trainer, if you don't have perfect timing, that doesn't matter, who cares, right? You're just out and you're having a good time with your dog and, and just as a result, of constantly being out and, and, and doing stuff with your dog, your relationship is gonna, it's gonna flower, it's gonna be nice, you know, and, and that dog's gonna enjoy going out with you, and a dog that enjoys going out with you is a dog that's gonna learn a whole lot. We need to put George into something I didn't show him how to do, but this really helps with fluidity, right? And it's called a, a four corner drill. All right, so George is going to go in the middle of these uh, four line tamer stands and he's going to practice. He's going to try to stay as close to the middle as possible uh, and get the dog to go from stand to stand to stand. And this is super fun. You can, you can just do this with, uh, with, uh, with, with uh, you, you can do it with puzzle match. You can do it with anything you want. It doesn't matter. Little boxes. And try to keep your, uh, you know, your sessions short and your repetition slow. Get, you got to get all four, right? All right, and that's, that's plenty. That's plenty. That's perfect. That's a great job. You know, it didn't look quite as fluid as your old man, but that's a pretty good job. All right, let's get another dog. Okay, we're going to do the same thing, and we got this little 15-week-old lab. Her name is Claire. We're going to do the father-son comparison here in smoothness, you know. And uh, obviously, the old man's going to be a little smoother. <laughs> you might wonder what it's like to grow up with a competitive dad. Uh, well, it's probably not that much fun for the kid, but it's a lot of fun for the dad. Very nice. Appreciate it. Now, you'll notice, like, look at this dog. Like, she's at a real oral stage, and you see how she kind of attacks my stick? I don't care, you know. People always like uh, they, they. You know how I was talking the other day about the, the language police on the internet. Well, you get you a stick out. All you're doing is teaching the dog to follow a stick around. You get you a clicker out. All you're doing is giving a little noise when they do something that makes you happy. And uh, <laughs> just let me tell you right off the bat, everybody is going to criticize how you use your stick or how you use your clicker. Just get ready for it. Everybody's an expert. Uh, I mean, it never amazes me. Every, everybody knows exactly how to use their target stick and everybody knows exactly how to use their clicker. And uh, none of them agree, right? So just have a good time. This is not, look, there's a millions and millions of dogs in the world. one <laughs> percent have ever seen a targeting stick or a clicker. So this is absolutely not necessary to, to, to train in a dog, right? But it is fun, but have fun and do it your own way. Like within the rules, right? You're gonna figure out what works and what doesn't work. And like if somebody tells you something, yeah, take it into consideration. But listen, <laughs> don't don't believe all them fake experts out there. Cause if 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 like I tell you, you know, if they ain't treating you like you're from Missouri and showing you with lots of different dogs, then they probably fibbing a little bit. All right, so here's this little dog. And she'll bite at my stick sometimes. And I ain't gonna say a word about it because I don't care. I got about a hundred of these sticks. All right, so we're going to do the same thing. Up, Very nice. And again, you know, I already have a kind of a base pattern of behavior set with the dog. And uh, what I'm doing is I'm just adding the target stick and the clicker into this base pattern, which is really fun. Wait. 
Very nice. Now we're going to get excited. Oh, come on, little Claire. Oh, my gosh. Up, 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 up. Oh, you're a good dog. Now, wait. Very nice. Okay. Now, see, even me. See, I started falling back in the pattern of talking like I always talk because I'm a big talker. But I'm going to try to be quiet for the rest of this exhibition. Oh. Now, see right there, what I was looking for is I wanted to stop right here. Right, there we go. That's what I wanted. And I'm just kind of mixing up this pattern a little bit. Very nice. Making it fun for her, but making it interesting. Making her understand that uh, even though she understands this, uh, these basic uh, elements of the exercises that we do on a daily basis, I would like for her to start thinking in terms of uh, maybe being attentive enough to accept the fact that there are always going to be uh, little, short, and unexpected changes in our normal day-to-day -day activity. Very nice. Very nice, dog. Oh, you are smarty, smarty, smarty. You are a smarty, smarty, smarty. It's a wet slide, but you're doing a good job. All right, now I'll do the, the uh, four corners here and uh, see if I can't uh, do it a little bit more smoothly than El Giorgio. And uh, once you get the dog to where it can do it, good. Oh, my gosh. Are you clumsy? All right, so like uh, kind of the basic thing that's going to go on here is uh, you're going to notice that your movements get smaller and your ability to influence the dog uh, gets more pronounced and more subtle. Very nice. You're a smart little player. <laughs> you see what I mean about this? It's just, it's just fun. It's just silly fun. It's just a lot of fun, you know. But, like, you can see how long it takes. I mean, I do a lot of dogs. I can't be out here, you know, because every time I'm clickering this one, I had to put everybody up, and that's not fair to everybody else. So the way that we train, because I know you're sitting there looking at that going, that's cool, Stoney, why don't you do more of it? Well, when I'm doing this, I have to put everybody else up, and they're all in there, like, feeling like they ain't getting their money's worth, right? And uh, here at Cabin Creek Kennel, we always give you your money's worth. Uh, come on, George. Let's see. Let's see you give these people their money's worth. Now, one of the things that uh, you really got to watch for is like the placement of your stick here. You'll notice George just randomly sticks the middle of that stick in the dog's face. <laughs> uh, but that's okay. They're learning. They're, they're getting along together. Now, if you have, uh, if you have children, guys, just accept the fact that uh, they're not going to do it right. And again, all you're really after is you just want the kids and the dogs out there having fun and learning to work together. And, uh, and, and let me tell you this, because I watch people with kids and wives and husbands all the time, and uh, dog training is kind of like playing pool. You always, when you're not the one with the pool stick, you always know the shot that needs to be made. So <laughs> whenever you go to doing your dog training, like uh, kind of resist the urge to uh, share your expertise with everybody in your little group because you probably ain't quite as good at it as what you feel like you are. That's why phones are so important. You know, videotape yourself, check yourself, and make sure that you are actually the Michael Jordan of dog training like you think you are before you start giving lessons and uh, criticism. We like to think of dog training as a no criticism zone. For all you people out there that actually know me, you know 100% true. That is a lie. <laughs> uh. Now, see, you listen to George talking. He should be being quiet there. Very nice. Now, since you're wrong-handed, you could go the other direction. Might be a little easier for you to learn your sweeping motions. Very nice. Now you're getting it. End on end going the other way, so you get a nice end of a fluid repetition, counterclockwise. Yeah. 
Now, if you drop your food, guys, you just, you know, let them, let them get it and then move on. And then every day, you just kind of striving to be a little bit more fluid and make your movements a little more subtle. Very nice. Think, uh, you know, like think like you're in the circus. Oh. All right, let's get another dog, Georgie. All right, guys. Here comes Zeus. Uh, Zeus is a cool black German Shepherd. He's about 16 weeks old, I guess. And uh, so we'll get right to work. And uh, let's see if we can get him to spin here. Oh my gosh, he can spin a couple of times. Very nice. We'll see if Big George can do that. And uh, then let's see if we can get him to spin the other way. Oh, where are you going? Where are you going, nerd? All right. Uh, what about getting him to come to you? Can you get him to come to you? Sure thing, right? And uh, then you can, oh my gosh. Get him to get in a heel position. <laughs> Let's go. Let's show you how this guy works. Now, uh, German Shepherds are extremely pattern cognizant dogs, and so what that does is that makes people think of them as being uh, very intelligent, right? Uh, in all honesty, I do not think that German Shepherds are any smarter than, say, a Jack Russell, right? They just, man, they pick up these patterns quick, though. They pick up these patterns and then they fall into the, uh, the, the self-reinforcing stage of patterns uh, very quickly, right? So like uh, German Shepherds are really, really, really easy to teach obedience routines to. They're easy to, to teach foundations to. So much the fact, you see how he kind of get, got, kind of got ahead of himself there. And so what I'm doing is I'm drawing his attention back to the fact that we're not just walking the course. We're walking the course, but we have an added layer of complexity of trying to keep up with this stick. Not trying to get in front of the stick, not trying to fall too far back from the stick, trying to keep our position relative to the stick, right? And so, like if you, you right here, you see, like he thought about it right then, you know, and that's what I need is I need for him to understand that although we're doing a relatively familiar pattern, right, there is this added layer that we're working on. And so watch, I'm going to stop right here and see if he thinks about what's going on. Yeah, that's right. You know, I, I didn't have to tell him to come back here. He comes back here and realizes that he has to maintain his body relative to the position of this stick. And this might take a few times. It's rainy and slippery out here, but that's okay. Because remember, what we're, what we're really working on here is, is effort, guys. You know, like when I come out on the small challenges course, uh, it's not an objective standard. It's a subjective standard. What, what I'm doing is I'm judging every dog based on their uh, willingness to try hard to learn what I want them to learn. Not all these dogs... Uh, are the same as it relates to physical skills. Not all these dogs are the same as it relates to pattern cognizance. And so all I ask is that the dogs, uh, you know, work hard. And you'll notice, if you watch this video carefully, you will notice that this dog, he's, you know, he's not quite as sure-footed like as the little Jack Russell, you know. And so that's why I have to judge them based on, you see he's getting a little ahead, so watch, I'm going to let him come back here and think about what we're doing. Because these dogs, they learn the pattern so quickly that, you know, he'll just start doing the pattern without keeping up with the stick, which is our added layer of complexity. Very nice. Now once I get it right, I'm going to turn over the reins to Mr. Georgie. And we're going to see what he's got. Oh, you can do it. Very nice. Now, that's about what I want right there. That's pretty good. Oh, I dropped a piece. Oh, ah, good. So I'm going to come back here. Now, I made a mistake there. My hands are a little bit slippery because of the rain. It starts to get hard to hold on to this clicker. So that's another point, guys. Always remember, like, just because your training session is going well, don't... Don't always put that on the dog, right? Because a lot of time as a trainer, you're making some mistakes. Sometimes those are mental mistakes. Sometimes they're physical mistakes. <clears throat> dun, 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 dun. Very nice. All right, we'll finish off with this directional stuff. 
And then we'll turn it over to El Georgi, El Jorge. And like this dog's been doing this a couple of days. So I can get a couple of changes for every click. Pretty neat. Oh, we'll make a whole behavior chain out of this. Let's see if I can get four. Very nice. Oh, you're so smart. You were such a smarty. All right, all right, Mr. George, come over here and let's see, let's see how you look. No, pick up your piece of food there. All right, uh, I'll try to move over here behind Eli, not to steal your spotlight. <laughs> That's harder than it looks. Harder than it looks. Yeah. Now remember, we're trying to get them to touch the end of the stick with their nose or follow the end of the stick with their nose, not the middle of it. Uh, you're trying. Dang, I didn't ask you if you're trying. I asked you what you're accomplishing. It's not bad. There you go. Put in that work. <laughs> Very nice. Very nice. Now you're getting it, Georgie. Huh? Curse, my wrong hand. curse your wrong hand. That's true. Look, and now you've lost your dog. That's all right. Just go back. Make yourself interesting. Be an interesting teacher, dude. You know, that dog can't help it because uh, God cursed you with uh, being left handed. Very nice. Now don't, now, don't let that dog determine your pace, right? If he gets too far ahead of you, you know, you just, you just kind of stop and let him come back around and figure it out. You know, he's, he's, he, this is a cooperative drill, but he's supposed to be on your time. Like, see how you're following him? Well, just wait. I'm not going to pay any attention to him. He'll come back. You got to think about getting this dog to follow you, son, just like when you're hunting for a wife. You can't pay them too much attention and follow them around. You got to play hard to get. Very nice. Now just wait, just wait, wait, wait. You see, that dog got ahead of you and said, I know what we're doing. And you're, you're like, no, dude. <laughs> what we're doing is following me around, not the, not the other direction. Very nice. There you go. Very nice. Very nice. All right. Now, go ahead and uh, that's about enough repetitions. Remember, with this, we don't do lots of reps. We want to leave the dog wanting more. So go over here and uh, let's work on your uh, uh, directional command on your four points. Now, when you're going between your obstacles like that, he's going to follow you. You don't have to drag that stick around, you know, the, the whole time, really. So you kind of are bringing your stick into play and out of play. And see how you're kind of losing him there? Okay, what that might be telling us is that the session has went on a little too long, right? Or you, you could, we could shorten up that session a little bit. Now, uh, all right, you can move out of the way for a second. Now, what else it'll tell you is that sometimes, like, a ses session length uh, a lot of times has, is positively correlated to how interesting you are as a teacher and how clear your lines of communication are. So, like, the more clear you are with your communication, the more uh, disciplined you are with your posture and the way that you employ your stick, okay, the longer your session can be. 
So the newer you are to this type of activity, the shorter your session has to be because the dog will get frustrated and you will get frustrated, right? And so then if you don't have a lot of skill developed yet, the, the, those problems kind of compound themselves and uh, you end up uh, like making it not that much fun. So I'm gonna end with something easy here. So I'm gonna bring my stick up and over. Right, and I'm gonna add a count, one, two, three, four, five, and every day you just add a few more numbers to that count, and the next thing you know, your dog sits there forever waiting for you to tell him that he's done the right thing. When you tell him that he's done the right thing, he knows that the check is in the mail, and he's gonna get a treat at some point in the future. That's it, that's all there is to this. It ain't, not brain surgery. All right, give me another dog. Okay, now we have uh, an Irish Setter. And uh, guys, you don't see these very often at all. And before I get started with this Irish Setter, I have to give a shout out. <laughs> this might actually be my very first shout out I've ever given uh, on YouTube. But this uh, young guy came up here and he brought his dog and he said, dude, my mom likes watching you on YouTube. And uh, her name is Laura and I would like for you to say hello to her. Well, hello, Laura. Uh, I'm glad you like my videos, and look at this super nice dog of your son's. It's doing perfect. <laughs> okay, all right, so here's Gunner. Let's see if we can get him to spin around a couple of times. Now, what you'll notice, you see right there? Like, uh, you know, like that happens. Guys, you're, you're working on something, and the dog is trying. Right, he went to get on that table. He didn't say, oh, Stoney, I know you want me to spin around. I'm gonna go get on the table instead. It's just something about the way that I presented myself right now led him to believe that going and getting on that table was the right thing to do. And it wasn't, right? But he, he, didn't, he didn't make that, you know, he didn't make a, a choice to, to misbehave. He just got it wrong. So don't fuss at him, guys. This is really important. You have to learn not to get frustrated and let your frustration show in your training. Because if you get frustrated, the dogs will get intimidated and they, they won't do this kind of training well. All right, so let's see what else we can do. We see if we can get him to come around here. Oh, can you do it? And you'll notice this guy, oh my gosh. Like he'll think a little bit more than some of those dogs. Now he's a bird dog and bird dogs, they're not pattern cognizant in the same way that a German Shepherd is. Cause so remember I was telling you, you know, I gotta judge all these dogs like based on their own strengths. The Jack Russell that you saw first, man, that dog's super acrobat, super smart, super pattern cognizant for a Jack Russell. It's the most pattern cognizant dog I've ever seen. Uh, the German Shepherd is uh, man, super easy to work with, super easy to motivate, very willing to get the reps in, but it's kind of going through a gangly phase. And so it doesn't seem to be quite as, uh, you know, quite as physically adept as the Jack Russell. And uh, then when I'm working with this bird dog here, this bird dog is very polite, very calm, very quiet, right? But has a little bit of trouble recognizing the pattern. So I got to chop, chop the patterns up into small, small increments. All right, and that's just what we do. You judge everybody as an individual and you chop these things up into little bitty digestible pieces, you know? And if you do that, if you do it, then everything ends up working out Fine, you know, okay, super fun. Come on. Dun, 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 dun. But what you might notice here is like the number of clicks uh, as I'm working on, as uh, the number of clicks that you're gonna hear is gonna be higher, right? And you might have to see me like reset more often because these kind of dogs, they just require a little bit more patience when you're working with them. You know, it really, really bums me out a little bit because people always try to act like these bird dogs are hard-headed and they're not hard-headed guys they're just you know they're just bred to kind of go off and be impulsive and and chase birds and so that's what's on their mind most of the time oh let's get excited oh my gosh let's slow down oh don't go too fast and don't go too far remember we're trying to keep up with the stick not just do the pattern See, like right there? So I'm gonna deliberately shortchange him here and I'm gonna back up and let him understand that we're not just doing this pattern, you see? Like he's going, oh, Stoney, I know what we're doing. We're just going through the course like we always go through the course. And he stopped there and he's looking at me like, dude, why are you hanging out back there? Remember, I have added a layer of, complex, of complexity to this activity. And he has to take that into account and keep up with where the stick goes not just race ahead of me in the pattern. And you might say, well, Stoney, what is the point of that? 
And again, the point of it is I'm just trying to refine my ability to influence the dog and the dog's ability to be influenced, right? Okay, a lot of times when, you, when you're working on something, like see, the dog will start to think, <laughs> the dog will start to think that they've got it on lock and they know what's going on. And I want to tell them, look, like you don't know what's going on, dude. Right? Not always. You're not, you're, he's about like my 12-year-old son. He thinks he knows. He thinks he knows everything that needs to be done. And I'm like, no. Like, I have some input on what's going to be done. And this is a nice, fun way to teach the dog to be patient without having to fuss and carry on too much. You see, after just a few repetitions, you know, of slowing him down there, like he's, he's you know, he's starting to do a little better. So I can change my pace, I can change my pattern if I want to. Good. Very nice. Oh, dropped it. Oh, here you go, buddy. Dun, 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 dun. Oh, and like even right here, see this dog, he's kind of sensitive. A little bit, little bit sensitive. He doesn't like this grass getting in his face. You know, those are the kind of things that you'll see sometimes too. Dun, 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 dun. Oh, you can't go around. Now look, see, he thought, well, Stoney, why would I walk through this grass when I can just walk around it all? And I'm going to wait here a little bit and uh, maybe position myself back over here and say, remember, the point of this game is not just to do the pattern. The point of this game is to keep up with the stick while you do the pattern. And see right here, he's doing it again. And I'm going to wait. And he's going to have to come back here. And he's like, hey, Stoney, I thought, like, I thought I knew how to do this. And I'm like, well, you do kind of know how to do it. But... What we're working on right now is making sure that you do it the way that I want you to, with the amount of speed that I want you to, and with the amount of precision that I want you to. Which means that our normal pause points might be adjusted. It means that our normal rate of, of movement might be adjusted. And that is how I refine my ability to influence the dog. You see how it ran around me here? So I just come back. And I say, now you'll notice it's starting to rain, right? And anytime you have an environmental change, you're going to get a change in your compliance rate. So don't get upset. Just, you know, just work through it. A lot of times people ask me how I get such a high compliance rate under high rates of distraction, high levels of distraction. Well, it's simply because we put in the work. It doesn't matter, raining, not raining, we're out here practicing. And so these dogs, they just get so much exposure to the to the work that uh, you know they can perform at uh, whatever level I need them to perform. Dun, 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 Very nice. Go over and knock out this four points and let Mr. George take over. Stand in the middle, see what we can get here. Dun, 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 dun. Oh, we got to get on there. Now I'm going to add a count. One, two, three, you know, 500, 600, whatever it ends up being. Every day you just add a number or two. Click, treat, release. Oh my gosh, you're so smart. All right, Georgie work in this rain. What effect does rain have on a dentist's work ethic, son? Doesn't. Doesn't, that's right. We put the work in. Now here, again, see the mistake George made? Uh, his girlfriend walked off and he walked over, honey, honey, where are you going? Right? He's going to have to learn to be a little tougher than that. <laughs> uh, you might have to get a little easier girlfriend. <laughs> All right, now come over here and, and, and just wait for a second. Now look at that dog, guys. That dog is looking at George like George has three heads. And uh, the, what it is, is this dog has, you know, and this is a hard, this is a hard activity for uh, this particular dog. And so, like, the teacher has to be especially clear and especially concise and especially interesting. So George is going to have to take and, and, and break 
his uh, work up into smaller bite-sized pieces. So I'm gonna have George bring the dog back over here and then give more clicks, more clicks, more treats. So we all pay, son. There you go. All right, now go ahead and take off into your pattern before we get flooded out here with Hurricane Michael or whatever it is. Lots of, yeah, lots of reinforcement, lots of clicks. Make it easy, make it bite size. Very nice. And we don't expect a super high compliance rate uh, in this rain, guys. It's hard to concentrate in the rain. It's hard to hold your clicker in the rain. All, everything, the rain makes everything harder. But I don't want you to think about, you know, things getting harder as a reason not to do it. You still want to get out and do it. You want to put the work in right because there's a lot of benefits watch the tires guys there's a lot of benefits to getting out and doing the work you know and the main benefit of these activities is building those lines of communication and motivation between the handler and the dog the actual activities and uh, the the speed and precision at which the dog navigates those activities is by far of secondary or tertiary importance you know, right here, some real life lessons going on. I'm teaching my boy that we work. It doesn't matter. Rain, cold, heat, shine, injuries, nothing. Inj my, my, my main man, Eli, over there has a broken hand from a fist fight the other night, but he's still holding that camera. We do not shirk from work here. That's, this is America, and America is built on work. And uh, so, there's a lot going on here besides just to get a dog to follow a stick around. Now, see that dog's going over there to the most familiar aspect of that pattern. Go ahead and take it to the four points, Georgie. Now, see, you should break that up, click and treat at each point right now because you're in a high distraction environment. You can't be stingy with your treats or your clicking when the environment changes, you know? Don't be stingy. Now make sweeping motions. You want to be fluid. You want to be clear. You don't want to be a lot of room for uh, misinterpretation. Now don't, uh, see right there? Well, yeah, it's a little bit early. Okay, so this is a, all right, you can walk out of here. <clears throat> so this is, a, this is a thing, guys. One of the things when you're doing this stick training, hey, dog. Uh, Gunner, one of these things when, when, when you're doing the stick training, now he doesn't want to leave George. Come here, nerd. Is like once, you know, like once you start to get a certain level of behavior, like you try not to go backwards. So if you've got your dog getting all the way up on the, on the uh, line tamer stand, then, you know, make sure that your click happens as the dog has completed that aspect of the behavior. You know, now as he gets better at this, you know, I'll be making fluid motions and I'll expect him to do like uh, multiple lion tamer stands for one click. And I might even throw a stay in there, throw my number to it, put a count on it, you know, maybe get him in a sit position and throw a count on it, one, two, three, four, five. And that behavior chain becomes one behavior. Now in the beginning stages, like we just, you know, heck, we click them for going over to the lion tamer stand and putting their feet on and then trying to get up there, blah, blah, blah. So you take this whole behavior chain, you know, this whole chain of activities, the course, our whole day, really, and you break it up into a bunch of bite-sized, digestible pieces for you and your dog. And every handler and dog combination is going to require different size bites, okay? So if you have to chop yours up in lots of little bitty bites, well, go ahead. You know, no problem. We all end up in the same place with the dog that'll come and be still and have good manners as long as we're persistent and consistent. Isn't that right, Gunner? Very nice. All right. Uh, maybe we got one more dog in there we can do. All right, we have Esther, uh, Portuguese water dog poodle cross. And, uh, you know, Esther's super smart, she learns patterns quickly. If she has any problems, it's because she's like 
uh, man, her endurance level is super high. Her overall en energy output level is really, really high. And uh, she loves doing stuff. So her exuberance level, sometimes, you know, it's like, you ever seen a kid that's like really smart, but when they take their test, they rush through the answers and they make uh, just little silly, simple mistakes. That's, you know, that's sometimes when you're training, you run up in those kind of dogs, like where, Every, every morning they're looking at you like, hey, what are we gonna learn today? What are we gonna, oh yeah, yeah, I remember that from yesterday. Let me do that, let me do that. And you're like, slow down just a little bit, concentrate, check your work, okay? So if, if you have one of these little dogs here like this, it learns real quick, but makes a lot of simple mistakes. Listen, you know, for your particular repetition scheme, you're gonna go a little higher on your repetitions per session, right? Because what happens is that when you first start your first start your work, they're bouncing around and kind of being crazy, and then they settle in. And when they settle in, you start making good progress. So we'll go through here and uh, we'll try to mainly like give uh, Esther a little bit of information when she's being like uh, kind of calm and, uh, and, and, and accurate with her choices. Very nice. Now you'll notice when I'm working a real excitable dog, I, uh, I try to get real calm with my voice. I try to draw my words out, you know, that's very important. And right here where I would normally get real excited and run through this part of the course, when I have a dog like Esther, if I take off running, hey, she's liable to run up to the top of the driveway, just to be honest. You see how she gets ahead of me there? But then she's like, hey, Stoney, I'll come back and get you. And she comes back here, tries to eat my whole stick, which that's okay, you know. Now, when it gets wet, if you're trying to do like this kind of work, treat work, and, and, and your clicker, uh, your hand's going to get real slobbery and you're gonna drop some treats. So that's another thing that you, like, that you have to accept, that you'll be trying to do your work, and uh, like you'll drop treats every so often, and uh, the dog will kind of seem to get distracted. Well, look, you know, that's just part of it. Don't get tore up about it. There you go, see how I'm just breaking these, uh, breaking these elements up into small bite-sized pieces. You see, look, she gets ahead of me, and when she gets ahead of me, loses her footing, like, you know, she's got to learn to trust me and concentrate on what I'm asking her to do. I know the speed that the dog needs to navigate the course at, you know, and she needs to trust that whatever speed that I'm telling her is the proper speed, is, it's, it's, it's the best course of action. Very nice. Dun, 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 dun. Oh, you following this stick a little too well. Very nice. You are a smarty. Dun, 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 dun. Now see, like, see this is slippery, right? It's wet. And so she's trying to make a decision not to do that. She's like, Stoney, I know better. And I just say, no, I know better. Come on, let's go up here and let's break this slide. You see right there? I'm going to break this slide down into bite-sized pieces. So... There's a little piece, and there's a little piece, and there's a little piece, and oh, there's the last bit. She kind of hopped over it because there's some water in it, so I'll fix that and uh, come back here and break it up in a few more pieces. Dun 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 dun. dun. Dun, dun. Very nice. Very nice. And perfect compliance because I took the time to break it up in the requisite number of bite sized pieces. Come over here, hit my four points. And she's kind of familiar with this, so. We'll just go ahead and bring her through here. Boom, 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 boom. Put a count on it. One, 10, 20, however much of a count you can get. Click and release. And now here's something else that you'll find interesting, or maybe, I think, like uh, 
you'll notice that the different dogs, like it's the same course, but all these different dogs, and I have to break different elements of the course into bite-sized pieces for different dogs. Like you never know what a dog's gonna struggle with. So just because your last dog didn't struggle with something doesn't mean that your next dog's not gonna struggle with that. Like you can see this dog here is like, she's like, hey Stoney, let's get back to work. That's enough yapping. And I'm gonna turn her over to Master George. Master George, take this dog. Now you're gonna have to be a good interesting teacher and you're gonna have to break things up into bite-sized pieces. So first off, show her you're the money man, because she's going to want to go with me, because she knows I'm the money man. Oh. There you go. So front loader on these uh, click and treats. There you go. Just let her know that you're in a business of paying, and you pay well. And then start moving into that familiar pattern. There you go. Very nice. Perfect. And this is all gonna work out just fine, you know? Esther's gonna get ahead of George sometimes. She's gonna make some mistakes. George is gonna make some mistakes. And uh, guys, I, I don't care, you know? Because all I'm trying to do is foster a, a positive working relationship between the dog and the handler, you know? Don't overthink what you're doing. Don't put yourself in the position of being hypercritical. Just get out, have a good time. Oh, that was perfect. That was perfect. If I wasn't making a video, guys, I would stop that vi the, the, this video right there at that point because as Esther came over those barrels, she usually kind of jumps right off of them and she stopped like a, uh, like a, like a, like exactly on point, you know? And whenever I'm doing a session and I get a dog that makes like some big breakthrough moment like that, I just will stop and end that session. But since we're making a video for you guys, we're gonna keep on plugging away. Break it up into bite-sized pieces, try to get you couple clicks right here towards the end so that she comes exactly off of the the uh, slide and you see there George dropped a treat that's okay just wait for her, George to eat her treat and then bring your stick into play so like if you lose your dog's attention take your stick out of play and then bring it back into play there you go okay head over to your four points your directional commands and so what you'll want to do here, George, is click and treat on each line tamer stand because, like, you know, your, 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 the, the, your stick movement is not as fluid as mine and, and your timing is not quite as well developed as mine. And so what ends up happening is your lessons are harder for the dog to understand. It's harder for her to stay focused and motivated. Remember, guys, dog training sessions aren't just about dog training. It's about people training. And the people training, a lot of times, is harder than the dog training. Now what you want to do is pick a direction and get all, all, get all four points in that direction. So go to your left. Go to your left. Click and treat. Go to your left. Try not to drop your treats. Now this is going to happen, guys. Don't drop your... While she's still looking for the treat, don't try to bring your stick into play, Georgie. There you go. Go to your left. And try to make try to try to make one fluid circuit. Click and treat on each each line tamer stand. And you can see right there the dog is not sure what George wants. And George is not sure what he's gonna do. And between the two of them not being sure, that's uh, you know, miscommunication. And uh, that miscommunication breeds uh, 
you know, self-doubt. And you know, a lot of times you'll see like a handler not knowing what to do, compounded by the dog not knowing what to do. That leads to frustration, and frustration makes the training session not all that much fun. Okay, that's why I'm always telling you guys, look, keep it. That's good, George. Uh, keep it simple and uh, have a good time, and don't get so uh, goal-oriented. Right? The, there's, there's no way to get good at this stuff without just doing it over and over and over and over again. We train 30 dogs a month, and uh, let me tell you, that is a lot of, <laughs> that's a lot of opening up lines of communication and motivation with dogs, and uh, I still learn stuff. You know, I still, like when I'm watching these videos, I still see lots of little stuff that I do wrong, and uh, all I can do is try to get better, and that's all I want you to take out of this video. You're going to go home and you're going to play, because I know most of you guys are watching this at work. <laughs> so you're going to go home and you're going to get your dog out and try to play uh, with this stick, and it's going to seem hard. Okay, look guys, it, it, the process is what I'm after. I don't care if you ever get good at fooling with this stick or this clicker or any of these things, except getting your dog to come and be still and have good manners. So go have a good time. Learn what you can learn through the experience. Make the experience fun, and there will be positive externalities, I promise. All right, good luck.